Ori and the Will of the Wisps is a game I've been waiting to play for multiple years now. Ever since I saw it at E3 in 2017, I've been extremely excited to get my hands on it. The first Ori game was just such a bold, amazingly looking, exciting and fun game that I've been wanting to play the sequel for the longest time. The reason why the first Ori game was a masterpiece was because of the fun platforming puzzles and really pretty art. The only thing things I didn't like about it were the combat and the save system. I, I hated the save system. So, is the sequel any good? Well, there are two ways to answer that question. One is to just say yes. Two is to say that you're an idiot for thinking otherwise. I'm going with option two. In all seriousness, Ori 2 is a beautiful emotional roller coaster. The game starts off with this cutscene where Ori's family welcomes a new member, a owl named Ku. Now Ku is kind of a dumbass, he can't even fly, idiot. So Ori has to help him by putting a big old feather on his broken wing. Then they manage to fly off and crash and the two get separated. Ori gets dropped into this mysterious, lush, darkly lit forest surrounded by beautiful hand-drawn trees and foilish. There is gorgeous music playing in the background while rain is pouring down. The atmosphere in this beginning bit is so immensely powerful and you really can feel that. Everything shown comes together and form this amazingly made package. It's beautiful. And it continues to do this. There are no drops of quality. The sound design, music and visuals are stunning throughout the whole game. But this isn't the only thing that keeps the game afloat. The gameplay also plays a huge role. It is this mix of fluid platforming and combat that makes it so much fun. There are a bunch of abilities and weapons to find and each one of them is useful at something. Combat is a serious step up from the original. Instead of having a ball of light that shoots light. Whoa! You have this big wheel of multiple weapon choices. A sword for dealing with common enemies. A heavy hitting hammer that takes a while to swing but it chips away a big chunk of health. A bow and arrow to deal damage from far away. The spear takes quite a bit of energy to use but it stuns bosses which can be the difference between life and death. The blaze is good for crowds of enemies and the sentry, well, this one is kind of a piece of shit. You can equip up to three weapons at a time and changing between them is the easiest thing to do. You just press the trigger and assign a weapon to the corresponding button of choosing and you're done. Also, platforming is really good. It's on this level next to Mario, we're talking about masterpiece shit. Moon Studios really knows how to do platforming well. Everything is so fluid and simple, yet it is quite difficult to master. You start off with almost nothing, but further on you get to unlock dashes, double jumping, a grappling hook, bashing. On their own, these abilities these are still a lot of fun to use, but once you combine them and start to string combos, then shit starts to get crazy. You're jumping off enemies and projectiles, dashing to walls to jump off it and grapple away. The movement is so diverse, simple and tough, yet the game never dwells on it. It keeps moving forward. So you have the combat, the visual design, music and platforming. Once you combine these all together, you get this perfect little dish that just blows away expectations. The the best example of this showing off in action are without a doubt the boss fights. Your skills really get tested here with tough but fair attack patterns and crazy set pieces. Even if these fights are quite difficult, I never felt overwhelmed or frustrated. If I failed, I knew it was because of my own mistakes. Ha, huh, that reminds me of another game. Oh yeah! Some of these fights are actually escape sequences where the boss is chasing you down a narrow corridor and you have to run away while everything is tumbling behind you. I love this. It gives you this rush, this energy like you're doing everything at just the right time. The first Ori game actually did this too, but not nearly as well as here. And there is a giant fucking gummy worm. A gummy worm wants to eat you. Come on, 10 out of 10. Despite the game looking so vibrant and exciting, the world you are exploring is in deep peril and kind of depressing. Characters are losing their families, forced to stay in hiding for the greater threats in the forest. A dark force overtaking multiple monsters unable to control themselves, everyone giving up because they've already tried everything. Yet the motivations the game gives you are so insanely strong. Ori and 
and the Will of the Wisps is a beautiful piece of art and a towering achievement for video games around the world. It is such a gigantic passion project with a ton of soul and heart put into it and at the end you're giving this warm hearted gorgeous ending that made me tear up. This game is a masterpiece and it deserves to be up there with the big boys. Please do me a favor, buy this game.